This is Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brock Boxers. And today, they open up the first league game of the season against the Dirk Hill Talkers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, and Rockton Pie's own Uzziah Hilliard. Guys, it's a very big game as Brock takes on Dirk, the first big three divisional game of the year. Yeah, and that's why it's such a big game, because it's the first division game of the year. Durfee's a tough team. I know Brockton's ready to play them. They really need to come out of here with a win to keep this um, winning thing going. That they've been, um, they've had a good year so far. I believe they only had one loss, and they've been looking pretty good. From my previous experiences, big three games are the biggest games of the year because they're in our league. So all, all, all I know, they got to focus and they will get this dub. Well, very similar records. Brockton is five and two. Durfee is six and two. It's a huge game as Brockton takes on Durfee. We're going to hand it over to the PA announcer here at Staff Gymnasium for the starting lineups, the national anthem, and then we will have the big three divisional game between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. <laughs> Very good, thanks. Be careful. Talking to the Talking to the Get the game between the Derby Hilltoppers and the Rockwell Boxers. This evening's starting lineup for Derby Hilltoppers is number three, Jason Jack. Number ten, Vanessa Guerrero. Number fourteen, Nara. Well, Miles, as we await tip-off here at Staff Gymnasium, mm -hmm. we have to discuss the Brockton's gunslingers, Jelani Jackson, Gianasia Silvermore, Nadia Montero, Catherine Lewis. They're all phenomenal from beyond the three-point perimeter. Yes, yeah, this Brockton high team. They can shoot the outside shot. Like you said, most of the starters can shoot that outside shot. They have um, the bench can also come in and um, help them out in scoring. So. They look pretty good. You've seen them uh, most of this year, haven't you, Izzy? Yes, I have. Um, most of the games that I've watched, they, all the starters, all the bench players have had a dominant game. So I believe if they play the way they've been playing, oh yeah, I think they can come away with this one. Both teams awaiting tip-off. Brockton kind of going with a different starting lineup tonight. They're going with 
Number four, Giannisha Silvermore back from an injury um, the last couple of games. Nadia Montero, Jelani Jackson, uh, uh, Catherine Lewis, and Aliyah Brito. Noticeably missing from that is number 11, Tony Fairhurst. Yeah, Tony, I, I believe she's on the bench, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure we'll see a lot of Tony during this game. Aliyah Brito wins the tip back to Catherine Lewis, who makes a great move to keep it in bounds to Jelani Jackson over to Gianasha Silvermore. Back to Jackson over Catherine Lewis. Lewis fakes the shot, gets back to Jackson, who hands it to Silvermore. Cross court to Lewis. Lewis for three. No good. Durfee with the rebound. Brianna Camara up to number 34, Jordan Govin. For three, no good. Silva Moore with the rebound for Brockton. 30 seconds in, scoreless. Silva Moore over to Jelani Jackson. Yeah, it looks like Durfee's playing a zone defense on the boxes. And the ball, the pass from Nadia Montero hit Aliyah Brito's face. Yeah, and, and her lens was knocked out. The lens on her glasses were knocked out, Matt. And Aliyah Brito is going to play blind, as we just heard at the official score table. She threw her glasses over it. Uh, yeah, she's a real gamer. She's a tough competitor. Nothing's going to keep her off the court. Miles, Tony Ferris was ready to come into the game. She jumped up the second she saw Brito coming over to the bench. Spread, spread, spread. Brito with the rebound for Brockton. Silvermore to Jackson, back to Silvermore. Brockton not really lucky getting the ball in bounds. Jonathan Jackson, NBA distance three, no good. Good work by Catherine Lewis to get the rebound. Brito with a short two off the backboard and in. Oh, nice job for Brito. That gives her a little confidence without those um, glasses on. Go, Jordan. Jalen Jackson bringing it up for the Hilltoppers over to Camara. Camara driving inside the paint off the glass and in tie ball game. Yeah, she's a tough competitor. She's not shy about driving to the basket. She's got, she's got a little um, body to her. So um, I'm sure we'll hear from her all day. Gavin in for Jackson. 14 post. Two minutes in, two to two, the score all tied up. Big three divisional matchup between the Durfee Hilltoppers and your Brockton Boxers. Number 10 holding Janessa Camara for Durfee. Stops, pulls up, uses the ball, gets it back, and throws it out of bounds off of the legs of Catherine Lewis. Yeah, Ben Brockton, you can see they're playing a man to man because they feel comfortable matching up with this Durfee team. Indeed, they do. Five on the shot clock to go. Number three puts up a three air ball. Brito with the rebound. But number 35, excellent work. Shaylen Carrero forcing the jump ball. Yeah, that was great defense on the uh, Durfee shooter who tried to shoot that three point shot. Brockton, Lady Boxers, defending her right in her face. And a shot clock violation by the Hilltoppers. Brockton will take over. Yeah, that was um, Jackson, the sophomore guard, who was guarding the Durfee uh, guard. She kind of, when she came down on the jump shot, she kind of twisted her ankle slightly, just tweaked it. Lewis to Giannisha Silvermore, over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson holding back to Silvermore. Tony Fairhurst getting ready to come back, uh, to come into the game for the Brockton Boxers. Catherine and Lewis with three, no good. Durfee with the rebound. <laughs> Nadia Montero knocks it out of bounds. Fairhurst into the game for Aliyah Brito. Well, Miles, it's always good to talk about the celebrity status of these games. The atmosphere at Staff Gymnasium is electric. A number of celebrities in the house. Brockton's own Taryn Johnson, head basketball coach at Massasoit Community College in the house, a Brockton High alumnus. I see Ray Henningsen. School committee member, I see Bob Buckley, among many others. And of course, we've got big game Miles in the house. Yeah, and I think the ref missed that one. It looks like uh, number 11 for Brock and Fairhurst got fouled when she put it up and there was no call. 
But Brockton has the ball. Catherine Lewis to inbound. She gets it long to Jackson. Jackson to Silva Moore. Brockton really having problems working the ball inside the paint tonight. Yeah, Durfee's uh, zone defense is working very well. Um, like I said, Brockton really hasn't tried to drive to the basket yet, um, Hosea. No, they have not. Usually they, their bigs get to the basket really well. Um, since Aaliyah is blind, as they said, she's not in there right now, and I don't know what's Hammer, up with Tony. Kamara driving in the paint, puts it up, no good. Fairhurst with the rebound for Brockton. Jelani Jackson the other way, her layup off the glass, no good. Fairhurst with the rebound, but she can't hold on to it, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, tough break there for the Lady Boxers. I like how they got the ball down very quickly. Kamara holding. Walking all around the perimeter. Top of the key, ball stolen by Catherine Lewis. Lewis lets the ball go out of bounds. Good defensive pressure there after Durfee committed the turnover. Yeah, I, li I like Brockton's defense, the Lady Box's defense so far in this ball game. Tamara loses the ball momentarily. A scrum on the floor ensues and a jump ball is going to be called. It will remain Durfee ball. A Brockton ball. Yeah, Brockton, Brockton earned that one. They went right after the basketball, bodies flying on the floor. Ronnie Jackson just over halfway into the first quarter. Two to two still to score. And Tony Fairhurst lets the ball go out of bounds yet again. Yeah, Fairhurst gonna have to grab those underneath. Just gotta get a hold of them. Janessa uh, Kamara bringing it up for Derby. And a foul called against Giannisha Silvermore. Well, they go the other way, Miles. They called a hold against Janessa Camara instead of a illegal block against Catherine Lewis. Yeah, Janessa's going to have to take care of that ball a little bit more better coming down the court. That's the second time she has lost the uh, basketball to one uh, of the Lady Boxes. She's got to protect that ball a little bit better. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night for uh, Jessica. Jelani Jackson all the way for Nadia Montero. Back out to Silvermore to Jelani Jackson. Catherine Lewis for three. No good. Brockton with the rebound. Three players fighting for the ball. Silvermore over to Jackson. Jackson back to Silvermore. Back to Jackson. Jackson, long distance three. No good. Out of bounds off Durfee, Brockton ball. I tell you, Lady Boxers, they're really cold outside. They need to try to get that ball inside. Durfee's doing a great job protecting the uh, paint area. So Brockton's going to have to really work it inside. Oh, somebody's going to have to start hitting the out outside shot. Well, the three is good for Brockton to break the tie. Five to two the score. Three minutes left in quarter number one. we're running this to you. Janessa Camara for the Hilltoppers. Here's it off to Brianna Camara. Eight on the shot clock. Camara loses the ball, but it's picked up by Janessa, who puts it up, no good. Gets her own rebound off the glass, no good. And Catherine Lewis with the rebound. Jelani Jackson, Silvermore wide open. Loses it, puts a shot off the glass, no good. And Durfee with the rebound. Even though uh, Silvermore missed it, I, I like the attempt. She went inside and tried to drive to the basket. That's a quick one. That's a quick one. Nicole, take it out. Janessa Camara coming out for a quick breather. She is replaced by number 12, Sydney Silva. Holding, she's there. Holding. Skip it. Camara to the foul line for number 35, 
Puts up a two, no good. Brockton with the rebound. They streak up court. Jelani Jackson with the windmill, no good. Kirkland with the rebound. Brockton's shooting is off tonight, Miles. Yeah, it is. E even the uh, inside game is off, but I, I like the effort. Nadia Montero being called with a block. Number 15, Nicole Emsley is at the foul line. Well, I tell you, Matt, it's been a real defensive battle between both teams. Absolutely, and a lot of turnovers caused by that. Exactly, defense causes turnovers, so. It's been really a tough fought battle out here on the court. Yeah. Elmsley misses her first at the line. Montero coming out of the game after committing her second personal foul. She is replaced by a glassesless Aaliyah Brito. Yep, she's she's a gamer. Brad, let's go. <coughs> hey, 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 here, 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 here. One for two at the line is Elmsley. Fairhurst back into the game for Brockton. She gets it to Silvermore over to Jelani Jackson. Jackson I, back to Silvermore. Matt, I, I like the communication. When they were bringing it down on the press, they they talked to each other out there to help them get it over the um, half court line. Good defense by uh, Durfee. They collapsed right on that basketball. Tamara spins around off the glass. No good. Fairhurst with long arms and the rebound. Yeah, you're right. Long arms, Fairhurst. I'm glad she went up, grabbed the basketball, came down with it, and looked for the outlet. Janisha Silvermore, no look pass to Catherine Lewis, back to Silvermore. Over to Jelani Jackson. Silvermore top of the key, back to Jackson. Jackson for three, no good. Aliyah Brito with a good rebound off the glass, no good. A lot of missed shots by the Brockton Boxers tonight, Miles. Yeah, that, that time great effort by the, the, by the big lady boxers underneath. They just couldn't finish the, um, the shot. Under a minute to go, five to three, Brockton on top in a very high scoring affair here from Steph Gymnasium in the first league game of the year. Jump ball and Durfee will retain possession. Yeah, that was great effort by both the Lady Boxers and the Lady Hilltoppers. Elmsley. Two inbound for the Hilltoppers. Check she gets it into Camara with 30 seconds to go. Camara for three, no good. And Fairhurst with another rebound. Jelani Jackson wide open for three, no good. Gets her own rebound. I am like how she followed her shot. Silva Moore for three, no good. Jackson now for two, no good. Brito with the rebound off the glass, no good, but she's fouled, she'll be at the line for two. Yeah, great effort by Brito. She, she had her position inside, kept the Durfee Hilltopper on the outside and got the rebound and put it right back up. Brito at the line for Brockton for two shots. Misses her first. 10.8 seconds on the clock, Miles, five to three. A lot of shots put up, but a lot of shots missed. Yeah, a lot of shots missed because of defense, like I said earlier. And I'm sure um, the, both teams will warm up in the second quarter. Brito, one for two at the line. Three-point lead for the Brockton Boxers. Full court press being put on by Brockton. Catherine Lewis forces that ball out of bounds. Now, I know, uh, Uzea, you, you appreciate the, the, the girls underneath, the, the centers and the forwards bumping in um, body bodies um, going against bodies underneath to get those rebounds blocking out. If I know you're a big guy. You you play that game, that type of game on um, on the playground, correct? Yeah, um, I know that when, when you play basketball, you always need bigs because you can't win it all just with guards and um, with, the little, with the little people because they can't do it all. We need people to get the rebounds. We need the people to do the nitty and gritty. Well, the score at the end of the first quarter, 6-3, to three, Brockton on top of Durfee in the first divisional matchup of the year. And Uzziah, it's 
time to have the annual conversation. Because you go to Brockton High, do you have classes with any of the Brockton Lady Boxers? Um, actually, yes, I do. Um, I have Miss um, Tartaglia's um, TV media class with Janisha Silvermore. Um, and over the past few years, we've built a um, good friendship, so it's good to have classes with her. And this, this conversation started with the great Peter Zimbor whenever Brockton High's television club steps in and assists Brockton Community Access in the production of Brockton High Sports. Uzziah, does she have any weird hobbies or anything that sticks out about her? Janisha has a real love and passion for the game, so most of the time she's, she's looking over game film, making highlight tapes, and doing projects all about basketball. And there's multi-talented athletes on the Brockton Boxers, most notably Jelani Jackson plays soccer and basketball for the Brockton Boxers. I know you're a football player. It, it definitely adds something when you're a multi-sport athlete. It really does when, when you can do more than one thing. It adds many different levels to your game. I know that um, in the off season with football players, they want us to wrestle or play some winter sport so we can stay in shape for the next season. Second quarter underway, Catherine Lewis in for Tony Fairhurst, kicks the ball out to Gianasia Silva Moore. Up for two, off the rim and in. Nice way to start off the second quarter, hitting that little short eight foot jump shot. You know, in, in that first quarter, a lot of the lady boxers were just shooting threes, and they just weren't hitting them. So I guess the coach told them, come inside, take the inside um, jump shot inside that three-point line. Good. Tamara's fouled underneath by Catherine Lewis. She'll be at the line for two shots. Now, Miles, something adding to the atmosphere here at Staff Gymnasium tonight. It, 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 first of all, this is the first girls game of the new year, and Happy New Year once again to everybody. The Brockton High School cheerleaders are in the house for the first time this season, both boys or girls. Yeah, and it's nice to see the cheerleaders brighten up the staff gymnasium here in uh, Brockton High. Look forward to um, seeing the cheers for the rest of the year. Kamara two for two at the line, eight to five the score now, Brockton on top by three. Fairhurst down under, off the glass and in. Yeah, nice communication there. Ball wasn't even dribbled, it was all passes. Janessa Camara out to, tried to get it out to Brianna Camara, but it was turned over. Brockton has it. Aliyah Brito in the paint, puts it up, but she is fouled hard. She'll be at the line for two. And I like how Brito, she got the rebound and right away, she didn't even put the ball on the on the ground to dribble it. She put it right up and got fouled. That's what you want to do when, when you're playing center or forward, you got some height. Don't put the ball on the on floor, put it right back up. Uto hits her first now, two for three on the night from the charity stripe. Yeah, you, you can tell uh, Alita, Alita, Alita Brio is a very smart basketball player. Three for four at the line tonight is Brito. 12 to five, the score a minute Tampered. and 15 seconds into quarter number two. Brockton, very stingy defense. Johnny Jackson forcing that ball out of bounds. Janessa Kamara, very frustrated Janessa Kamara coming over to the bench for the Hilltopper. She's got two personal fouls, so the, the coach of Derby, Brendan Kelly, wants to give her a, a breather, you know, have her calm down a little bit. Yeah, and that's her third turnover, too. Kamara for three, no good. Silva Moore with the, the rebound for Brockton. Silva Moore. That's gonna be a foul call. Yeah, I'm, I was thought he was gonna call a foul, but he's calling a jump ball. Nice job by Silva Moore to get the rebound, get the defensive rebound, bring it all the way down coast to coast, 
and take a shot, a layup. Looks like she got fouled, but um, the ref thought otherwise. Jackson with the steal, gets it down low to Brito off the glass, no good. Jackson with it over the back. Again, it looked like Brito got fouled when she went up. I saw body contact, but there was no whistle. Great defense by uh, Jackson, though. Stealing the ball from the Hilltoppers. Brianna Kamara bring it up for the Hilltoppers. Kamara walks into the paint, gets it to Emsley. Emsley pull up jumper, no good. Fairhurst with the rebound for Brockton. Good bounce pass by Aaliyah Brito, down low to Tony Fairhurst. Yeah, Fairhurst got to finish those. Nice job by Brito. Jackson with a good takeaway, gets it to Catherine Lewis. Jackson with the floater, good, and Durfee's gonna call a timeout. Yeah, that was a nice finger roll by Jackson. Fourteen to five, the score. Brockton up by nine points. Five twenty to go in the second quarter. Jelani Jackson trying to lead the boxers. Usually, she's a gunslinger from beyond the perimeter. Miles. Really, the boxers have been held relatively quiet by the Durfee Hilltoppers. Yeah, they have. But I tell you, I, I can't help but mention Aaliyah Brio. She's one of the captains on this basketball team, and that's why she's a captain. Very smart basketball player has eyes all over the court. Even though she's not wearing her glasses, she still sees her um, uh, um, pl um, playmate cut into the basket. Beautiful pass, Fairhurst just has to finish that. Miles, it is a, a special night here at Staff Gymnasium. For Brockton Community Access, as well as the Brockton Lady Boxes, we have a Brand new production truck. It still needs a few tweaks, but we do have a brand new production truck. We used it last Tuesday for the boys game against Barnstable. And uh, we want to thank all the crew for helping us pull this together on camera. We have Chris Barrow, Rob Curry, Mike the Postman Simmons. We have the Brockton High School TV Club helping out, led by Lynn Tartaglia. And in the truck, we have a couple of living legends, prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow and the one, the only, award-winning director and producer. It's not Newbie, it's Paul Mandeville. Well, I knew it wasn't Newbie because you didn't say four time, but uh, yeah, we have one of the true veterans in the, um, in the um, downstairs in the TV truck, um, Paul Mandeville, the man, Paul the man Mandeville. Yeah, we have John from Access AV helping out as well, trying to help us get familiar with the, the, new, uh, the new accessories. Well, well, I tell you, when I walked into that TV truck, I was really impressed. State of the art, 21st century um, board screens. It was very nice. Fairhurst, no good. Brito off the glass and in. Yeah. Brito, she just commands respect in that uh, red paint area. Good pass by number 34, Jordan Govin. Over to... Number one, Isabel McDonald, who put it off the glass. And then 17-7, Brockton up by 10. Yeah, Lady Hilltoppers need more of that fast transition game if they want to stay with the Lady Boxes. Giannisha Silvermore over to Jelani Jackson. Back to Silvermore. For two, no good. Durfee with the rebound. Natasha Elias in the game Isabel, for Leah Brito. Isabel, other side. Yeah, now this is the time the, the Lady Hilltoppers have to take advantage of Brito being out of the lineup. Try to get some inside baskets. Hey, go up blue. Hold up, go up blue. 
An offensive foul called on Shaylin Carrero, an illegal block. Ooh, nice move by Silva Moore, but she misses the shot. Back come the Lady Box, uh, Lady Hilltoppers. They get it inside. Shot is blocked by Fairhurst. Back come the Lady Boxes. Silvermore drives in a paint, stops, pops, bang. Say I like how um, Silvermore moves that ball. She's not afraid to drive to the basket. Not at all. I know that um, usually when she goes to work out, she works out with a lot of um, guy ball players, so she's used to the nitty gritty, she get to the rack, pull up when she needs to. Yeah, you know, I knew there was something tough about her because she looked like she could play with the guys. She just can do it all. She's not afraid out there. Um, and, and, and that's great practice to play with the guys just makes you a better ball player. Nice rainbow lollipop shot in the uh, paint right there by Jackson. Kentucky, use Jordan. Use Jordan. And here comes Silvermore in the lady boxes. Jackson up top. Get it inside the Fairhurst. Back outside the Silvermore. Long bomb. No good. And I believe it'll be Brockton's ball. Now, Captain Lewis, she's been kind of quiet today, this evening, so far. Usually, um, she's doing a little bit more, but um, I'm sure she'll heat up sooner or later. Hopefully, because I know that the bo Lady Boxers, they need her. Still Lady Boxers ball. So Lewis will inbound it. Jackson brings it back out top. Silvermore drives to the basket. No good. And they're going to call a foul on Catherine Lewis. And that's her second foul. And we've got two minutes left in this second quarter. Box is up 21-7. Get out, Jordan. Get out. We need one. We need a real big one. We need a big one. Natasha Elias for three. No good. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Kamara has it for the Hilltoppers. Good offensive board. And number three, Jalen Jackson. Puts it up no good. Diane. And an arm bar called on Catherine Lewis. That is her second personal. She will come out of the game. Uh, her third personal, rather, she will be replaced by Aaliyah Brito. Yeah, um, they, they need to get Catherine out of there. But only a minute, 19 seconds left in the second quarter. They don't need for her to get a fourth foul in the, four, in the second quarter, so. 21-7 the score. Brockton on top and D'Angeli Santiago at the line for the Hilltoppers. Durfee in a bonus situation. And Santiago missed her first, she does not get a second. Durfee almost committing a five-second violation. Brockton putting on very, what? very strong defense. We know, I know one of the Durfee players forgot that it was her, they had the ball and she was playing defense. Ooh, nice defense by the Lady Boxes. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Lady Boxes just making it real tough for Durfee. They, they've gone inside, but a lot of their shots have been basically blocked. Fairhurst pass for <laughs> Silvermore, excuse me, inter, uh, tipped. Librito down low, rebounded by Fairhurst off the glass, no good. 
and a jump ball. And it will be a Durfee ball. Yeah, Durfee's got Jackson fighting hard for that ball with with the um with um, Brito forces the jump ball. Durfee's possession. 34 on for three off the glass and in Jordan Galvin. You know, that's what I've been waiting for for some of these Durfee uh, Hilltopper shooters. They can shoot that outside shot. It's just been great lady boxer defense. Anything you can do, I can do better, Jelani Jackson, no good. Silvermore with the rebound from the seat of her pants, gets it over to Aliyah Brito. Brito spins off the glass, no good. Oh, I, I, I love the spin move. 10 seconds to go, intercepted by Brockton. You gotta move. Genesha Silvermore to Brito, or a long three, no good. The score at the end of the first half. Brockton 21 and Durfee 10, a very, very high scoring affair from Staff Gymnasium. Of course, I say that semi-sarcastically. Yeah, um, just great defense by the Lady Boxers. It took them a while to really warm up. They only had like seven points in that first quarter, but they warmed up. They've got 21 points now at the half. I, I just look forward for um, bigger things in the second half because I think the Lady Boxers can uh, run um, Durfee into the ground a little bit. Durfee doesn't look like they have a strong bench, um, Isaiah. In my opinion, I knew that it was going to be somewhat of a tough game. These girls are really fighting for points, both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. They're trying real hard to do what they need to do. Miles, Aliyah Brito playing not really injured, but without her glasses. She is at a severe disadvantage. She's still doing a fantastic job for the Brockton Boxers. Uh, I, I just can't say enough for Miss Brito. She's focused ever since those glasses came off. I, I didn't think she was going to be able to play, but she's just focused in, and um, she's making great passes without those glasses. She's getting rebounds without the glasses. She's just doing it all. She's just a real gamer. Is that anything to add? I, I agree with Miles. Um, Aaliyah, same thing. She's always at the gym working out with the guys, so she's tough. She plays through whatever she needs to play through. You can see that knee brace on her leg, so she has some knee problems, but she keeps on playing through it. Well, the score at the end of the first half, 21-10. The Brockton Boxers lead the Durfee Hilltoppers in the first Big Three Divisional game of the year. We will take a quick break and bring you second half action right after this. Girls, welcome back to Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Durfee Hilltoppers and the Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, alongside my broadcast partners, Big Game Miles Jackson and Brockton High Zone Uzziah Hilliard. Brockton leading 21 to 10 coming into the second half, and we're joined by a local celebrity right now. Local celebrity, the head basketball coach at Massasoit Community College, Taryn Johnson. Taryn, how you been since you left Brockton High? I'm good. Nice to be back home and get to catch a game. I've been good. And you had a very, very good college career up in New Hampshire, correct? No, in Connecticut, Connecticut. actually. We go to New Hampshire tomorrow. My team at Massasoit goes to New Hampshire to play in a tournament, so that's relevant. But I played at Fairfield in Connecticut, and then I played a little bit overseas after. And it's great to see people coming back to their roots Still handling the basketball here at Staff Gymnasium <laughs> as an errant pass came over to the announcer's table here. I like to think I still got it. But uh, coming back to your roots here in Brockton, what, what made you come back? This is where home is. Um, I was ready to start playing and start my coaching career. I got the opportunity at Newberry College first, and then the Brockton job opened up. And the AD who's watched me play all my life as a, as a Brockton kid, um, offered me the position and this is what I dreamed of, this is what I wanted to do, to master the next level of the game. And the entire first half you were sitting up with the best teacher here at Brockton The best High. teacher. Not playing any favorites. The best but teacher. The best teacher. Every, every athlete right in Brockton High School knows her. She was also, she may not tell you about it, but she's a Hall of Famer here. Miss T got a little bit of game. Oh, the game. women's basketball. Every time you see her, congratulate her. She's a Hall of Famer here at Brockton High. Her number is retired. She was the business. As one day yours will, along with Morgan Thatcher, who's the volleyball coach over at Stonehill. Yeah, is she? 
Yes. She was uh, really good at volleyball. She also played a little bit of basketball. My Her freshman year was my senior year, and she, I liked playing with her, so I'm not surprised. She'll do great things there. Multi-talented athletes coming back oh, to yeah. the City of Champions. The City of Champions. Hopefully the girls, they're looking pretty good this year. I look like they can make it far into it. So maybe a semifinal round, hopefully a championship game. Dingwell's doing a really good job with them. And continuity is good. And April Dingwell has been the coach here for oh, a good man. number of years. She was here when I was here. She was my, I call her my saving grace. Because at the time, Coach Brennan was the head coach. And if you know Coach Brennan, you know he can be a little rough. And she would come and pat you on the back. They were, they were the good cops. She, he was the bad cop. She was a good cop. So Dingwell was awesome. She's very well, good with the girls on and off the court. And uh, so lots of continuity. It's definitely helping the program out. Oh, yeah. A number of returning players from last year, Genesha Silva Moore, uh, Jelani Jackson, Catherine yep. Lewis, Aaliyah yep. Brito. Brito, very really good. A full returning cast, and that's very, very important for oh, the yeah. basketball team. Oh, yeah. It's experience. You, you've been playing with each other for some time. You know your personnel. And you know each other off the court. It makes it easier to play on the court. So, yeah, lots of experience here on this court, on this team. Well, Taryn, thank you for your time. Thank you. Good luck up in New Hampshire My tomorrow. childhood friend. It's awesome to see you Back doing the great things the, here. The glory days of the Huntington, TV Club. Huntington Elementary, though. We go back way back. Way back. <laughs> it's way good to back. see you again. Hope all is good well. Good to see you, too. And, Take uh, care. Good luck with Massasoit. Yeah. I'm sure you'll bring your title back to Brockton. Thank you. I'll try to. Thank you. Thanks, Durfee thank calls you. a timeout. Jalen Jackson has the ball. She gets it over to... Camaro gets back to Jackson with the floater shot up and in. 26 to 12 now the score. Brockton on top of Durfee. Giannisha Silvermore. Durfee working the full court press. First time this game we've seen that. Jelani Jackson now for Brockton walking along the edge of the court. Gets it up to Montero. Montero followed on the way in. Puts it off the glass. No good, but she'll be at the line for a two. Well, I tell you, man, it's nice to see um, Terry coaching over there at Massasoit uh, Community College, giving back to the community. Absolutely, and uh, another one of the stars that was ushered in as Taryn was, was graduating, Morgan Thatcher, who still has a banner up at the top of Staff Gymnasium for the 2009-2010 Massachusetts Volleyball Player of the Year, a big Gatorade award. She's now the volleyball coach over at Stonehill. So, Multi-talented athletes doing big things in the city of champions. Yeah, exactly. Um, they, they were very talented, and now they're um, teaching other students how to play the game of basketball, volleyball, etc. Jelani Jackson with the takeaway. Six minutes to go in quarter number three. She gets it over to Giannisha Silvermore. Silvermore cross court to Jackson. Jackson, top of the key, back out to Silvermore. Silvermore puts up a floater, good. Uh, that was just a beautiful drive, stop and pop from about six feet from the basket. Jordan Govin hands it off to Jackson. Jackson cross court for Kamara. Kamara, good crossover. Down low for Jackson, off the glass, no good. Fairhurst with the rebound, but she gets it taken away by Brianna Kamara. He gets the rebound, is Fairhurst, and she kicks it out to Nadia Montero, all the way down for Silva Moore out to Jelani Jackson. Brockton slowing things down here a bit. Always a, a good strategy. Nadia Montero down low for Brito. Brito can't handle the pass, but Tony Fairhurst gets the Aaron pass, she has it stolen by Jalen Jackson. Yeah, that, that bounced right off of um, Aaliyah's face a little bit. I'm just glad that lens didn't pop back out. Janessa Camara, one-handed pass over to Brianna Camara. Camara scored a shot, good. Nice shot by Camara. That was an athletic move. Kind of like an over-the-hand scoop, well, over-the-head scoop hook shot. Silver Moore fouled on the way in. She will be at the line for two shots. Yes, yeah, Silver Moore just too fast for the Lady Hilltopper defender. All she could do is push. Silver Moore misses 
Fisher, first shot. Brianna, you're gonna go to the safety spot on red. Interesting situation, Janessa Camaro coming over to the bench telling head coach Brendan Kelly she cannot play for the rest of the game, she's done. It, it must be something um, physical. Jalen Jackson shot off the glass, no good. Brockton with the rebound. Montero's floater, no good. Goes right into the hands of Leah Brito off the glass and in. Yeah, she's right there underneath the boys where she's supposed to be. Jalen Jackson over to Camara stolen by Giannisha Silvermore, but it goes out of bounds. Yeah, another positive thing about these lady boxes. On defense, we're right down on this end. We can hear the lady boxes talking to each other. Um, Uzaya. Um, communication is a big part of the game of basketball. If you don't communicate, you don't know what you need to do. Exactly. Jalen Jackson exploder shot, good. That was a nice job, Lady Lady Hilltop is driving in the basket, that little lollipop shot, that was the only way to, to get it over those big long arms of the Lady Boxes. Fairhurst off the glass and in. Excellent passing by the Brockton Boxes. Yeah, nice to see Fairhurst use that backboard. Fairhurst with the rebound, gets it over to Jelani Jackson, 3.10 to go in the third quarter, 34 to 16 the score. And Coach Dingwell is not happy with a no call by the officials on what she thought was a charge. Yeah, she's still talking to the official as he walks down to the end of the court. She's still letting him know she was not happy with the non-call. Brianna Camara, floater, no good. Brito with the rebound for Brockton, kicks it out to Silvermore. Up for Jelani Jackson. Yeah, it was a good, good idea. Brockton slowing it up a little bit, setting it up, use a little bit of that clock. Nadia Montero down for Jelani Jackson. 10 on the shot clock inside for Brito. No good. Fairhurst pushes it out. Excellent save by Giannisha Silvermore. Jelani Jackson walks in. No good. Rebounded by the Durfee Hilltoppers and a foul committed by Tony Fairhurst. That was excellent hustle by the um, Lady Boxes to save that basketball. Interesting situation. The official scores table, as, as happened so much, players come to the first table they get to here courtside, and the official scorer didn't know that there was a Durfee substitution ready to be made. Didn't sound the horn, the referees didn't call for the sub, and the head coach is less than pleased that his substitution is not able to be made. Yeah, I, I don't know who it is, but always the visiting team, I guess we looked that official here on the um, at the courtside bench that um, they always stop here. Ooh, nice job by Fairhurst. Those long arms right up there for the rebound. Jelani Jackson with a minute 30 to go. Janisha Silvermore for three, booyah! Yeah, she, she's nasty. She can do it all, she can drive to the basket, she can shoot that outside shot, she plays great defense. Silvermore is just all around basketball player. Of course, the booyah, shout out to Stuart Scott, the late, great Stuart Scott, unfortunately passing away at the age of 49. After a long battle with cancer, very inspirational figure, not just the sports world, he's getting, he got a shout out from the president. He's been getting nothing but love, which is very rare for a member of the mainstream media. Yeah, um, that was very appropriate using one of his famous terms. Um, yeah, he was, he was an inspiration to all of us. Um, a, lot of, a lot of young sports casters coming up saw, and he started on um, ESPN2 and just worked his way up. And just a very nice guy. Um, everybody loved him, never heard a bad thing said about Stuart Scott. Um, Uzea? 
Same with me. Um, growing up, I always saw him on TV. And be like He must love his job no matter what he was going through. He always had a smile on his face. The movies that he happened to be in on ESPN and Acton Rose, it just showed his love and determination for his job. Of course, winning the Jimmy V Perseverance Award at the 2014 ESPY Awards. Unfortunately, he leaves behind two daughters along with a loving fiance. Just, just a rough situation down in Connecticut. All week long, ESPN's doing, been doing tributes. Pretty much every sports station has been doing tributes for the great Stuart Scott, along with his mannerisms. As cool as the other side of the pillow, like gravy on biscuits, it's all good. Smooth as butter. Smooth as butter. Booyah. Well, I, I tell you, I, I saw the ESPYs, and that, when he got that award, and he said his speech, it was very heartfelt, inspirational. Uh, it was very touching, and just, just, just a big loss to the um, sports community. Miles, one thing that I definitely took to heart in that speech is Stewart said, when you die, you do not lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, <laughs> in the manner in which you live. And he's exactly right, Matt. Absolutely. Under a minute to go, Fairhurst down low off the side of the backboard. Durfee takes over. 39-18 the score. Brockton on top. Good crossover by Brianna Camara. Yeah, she, she can handle that basketball, Camara. 13-4-2, no good. Brockton with the rebound. Durfee takes it away and puts up two points. Yeah, that was a great effort by Kamara. Go up, get the rebound, and just a nice little bounce pass in the paint to her teammate. And she hit the little short jumper. Catherine Lewis over to Jelani Jackson. Brockton going to hold on for the last shot up by 19 points. Catherine Lewis, no good. Brianna Kamara with the steal. And the buzzer sounds before Sydney Silva can get off a shot. The score at the end of the third quarter, 39 to 20, Brockton up by 19, and gaining steam here in the second half miles. Yep. The big story of this game, I, I can see, is Brockton's bench is just outplaying um, Durfee's bench. And, and basically, that, that's what it is, besides the starters doing a great job. But Durfee has no answer when their starters get tired. Brockton has an answer when their starters get tired. They got a great bench. And, and, and that's the difference in this ball game. Uzziah, what are you seeing so far? Um, what I'm really seeing is um, the, um, the conditioning that Coach Dingwell has instilled into our girls, because I know from the friendships that I have with the girls that their trials, their practices are full of running. We all crack jokes saying they're getting ready to run a marathon because all they are doing is running and hustling, and they always do what they need to do. They, they haul. They haul behind when they need to. They just hustle. They keep on pushing no matter how tired they get. She taught them to just keep on pushing. I, I heard her say, she said, don't let up. Just keep on playing the way you guys are playing. Absolutely. And Uzziah, take us through the Brockton High School television production crew here tonight, helping out Brockton Community Access on a fantastic game here from Staff Gymnasium. Well, um, we have Neil um, announcing. We have Clifford. Um, Braxton, Anthony, they all, they're shadowing the cameraman. We have Marcus in the truck. And Marcus is the future of our television media program. He's a sophomore, very active in the TV crew. And he just has a love for, for this program. And if it wasn't for Miss Tartaglia, we wouldn't have this great opportunity. Absolutely, as Jalen Jackson kicks it out to number 34, Jordan Govin. Shot put up, no good. One on the shot clock, no good. Brockton High with the rebound. Giannisha Silvermore as the shot clock expired. Silvermore fouled hard. You saw her head snap back off of the shoulder of the Durfee player. Yeah, Silvermore, she, she can put that speed on, and the defender, most defenders just can't keep up with her. So what, what happened there was she put the speed on, defender tried to keep up, and there was body contact. Ooh, nice steal. Nice steal by Isabel McDonald, who's in alone. She puts it off the glass. No good. You gotta make those easy shots. You know, and in and, and, and that case, when, when you got a defender, when, when you got a defender on you and there's a tall person, me personally, I would have rather, as a coach, have her bring the ball back out, set it up, you know. 
Miles, as I said, you got to make those easy shots. Head coach Brendan Kelly looks over at me and says, I agree with you. I agree with you. You got to make the easy shots. Catherine Lewis for three, no good. Nadia Montero with the rebound. Lewis picks up the ball, gets it over to Tony Fairhurst, misses a couple of shots, and commits it over the back trying to get her own rebound. Yeah, I mean, nice effort by uh, Fairhurst, but she should have made that easy bunny. Jalen Jackson now for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Inside for Govin, hands it off to McDonald. Back to Govin. Govin over to Kamara. Kamara spinning, held onto the ball. Looked like she could have committed a travel. No whistle, she gets it back in the paint. Kicks it out to Govin. Oh, get out of my face! Tony Fairhurst with a fantastic block, Miles. Yeah, that was perfect timing by Fairhurst. She timed it per perfectly. Great defensive play. Very loose coaches here at Staff yeah. Gymnasium tonight. Good, good jump. Okay, go get ready. Jelani Jackson kicks it out to Silva Moore. Silva Moore foul line too good. Brockton up by 21 points. Jackson for Durfee. Inside to Govan, over to McDonald. McDonald loses the ball. Picked up by Fairhurst, uh, uh, Nadia Montero rather, who tried to get it to Fairhurst, but nobody was on the receiving end of that pass. And a timeout a substitution made the Durfee bench standing up to salute their players coming over to the bench miles. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> bench, Durfee's bench having a tough time. Um, the coach knew he had to get his starters back in there. Kamara baseline, kicks it over Ooh. to number 15, Nicole Emsley, who puts up a beautiful two-point shot. Junisha Silva Mora on the other end. Yeah, nice shot by Nicole. She's a captain also. Jelani Jackson trying to set things up for Brockton. Five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Kicks it out to Catherine Lewis, inside to Fairhurst. Back out to Jackson. Jackson thinking shot, no good. Six on the shot clock, Durfee with the rebound. And Miles, one thing I noticed that it seems nobody else did is once Durfee picked up that ball, the shot clock did not reset. It was taken down at seven when Durfee picked up the ball, and it got all the way down to two before they reset it. So Durfee had an extra five seconds. It would have been very weird if that buzzer went off. Right, right. Well, I'm seeing you're, you're on top of things here, Matt. Aliyah Brito with the lenses back on replaces Tony Fairhurst. Yeah, Fairhurst did a nice job while she was out there in this second half to increase this box of lead. Brito with a rebound. Miles, one of the beautiful things of sitting courtside here at Staff Gymnasium is we can hear everything on the bench. And Brendan Kelly just said, that was a travel. I guess they don't call those anymore. <laughs> Well, he's absolutely right ever since a man named LeBron James stepped into the NBA. Travels have been non-existent. You're exactly right, Matt. As the four-time award-winning director and producer calls it, the post-LeBron era <laughs> of high school, Bad. college basketball. No travels to be found. Very rare fouls. Jackson in alone for Brockton. Off the glass, no good, you're gonna make the easy meatball. You gotta make, especially she put the speed on to get away from her defenders, and that should have been an easy two. Now Jordan Govin in alone, you gotta make the easy meatball. It's just tough defense right there on the, on the Lady um, Hilltop is there. Great, great defense by the boxes by um, Brito. Uh, 
Wiles with all the meatballs that could have been had here at Staff Gymnasium, we could have been sitting having a very nice Italian dinner right now. Yes, indeed, and you just missed a great move when you just made that comment by Brito. She got the ball, they fed it to her inside, and she did a nice little spin move and put it right up. Yeah, that Italian dinner sounds good there, man. Foul committed by Catherine Lewis. Genesha Silvermore being called on the foul. That is her second personal. <laughs> Miles, we'll get you next week with that uh, that Italian dinner. The Brockton High boys on Tuesday night play at home against big three divisional rival New Bedford. The same night, these very same lady boxers will be at New Bedford High in their second league game of the year. And then the girls play against BR, and we're gonna do a collaboration with Bridgewater TV on the Friday night game against the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Another big rivalry with the Brockton Boxers, and really coming alive in the recent years as the football team has taken on the Trojans in the annual Thanksgiving Day Cape Cod Bowl. Yeah, it's not just the boys, it's the girls too with um, Bridgewater Rainham, and it's nice to see that uh, rivalry growing as the um, as time goes by. In Uzziah, that Cape Cod Bowl, the Trojans got the better of the boxes for the first couple of years. A very competitive one point loss by the Brockton boxes this year. Just talk about what the rivalry is with the Bridgewater Rainham Trojans. Well, in the, the past years, we've been playing Bridgewater Rainham on the Thanksgiving Day game, and most people don't realize that before we played them, we played multiple other teams. When you look back in the history of the Thanksgiving Day games that Brock and I have played in, we played Waltham and all these other schools. But there's a new rivalry brewing, and it, it's against BR, and um, it's a real, really a rivalry because we're so close, and a lot of people that go to live in Brockton, go to Bridgewater Rainham, and a lot of people that live in Bridgewater go to come to Brockton High. And I feel like on, on, the, on the field and on the court, there's bad blood, but when we come together like we did on a team dinner, we, we just really cordial, we just laugh, have made jokes, and it's just really a peaceful setting. But once, once it's down to the nitty and gritty, it's, it's game time. And a very, very competitive game this past Thanksgiving. Like I said, Brockton losing by one point to the Trojans to bring their Cape Cod Bowl record to four and one for the Trojans, one and four for the Boxers. And Uzziah, what year are you here at Brockton High? I'm a senior, class of 2015. So that was a very, very tough loss. It was not the last game because of the new playoff format for football. Now, one thing we have not been able to do is get a player's view on the playoff format for the MIAA playoffs in football. What are your thoughts? Well, um, when they first um, in installed this new playoff format, it was in my junior season, and we all know that last year we went five and six, and unfortunately we lost the playoffs because we needed to win our division, we needed to win our conference, and we didn't. We lost by, to New Bedford by six, I believe. So we didn't make it to the playoffs. And then this year, we, we played, um, we beat, we won our division, we won our conference, and we had a um, playoff game, our first playoff game at home on Halloween against Boston College, but, and we lost. But this new playoff format is different, but I, I believe it's good because I believe that if you get the, back in the day, a couple years ago when you lost that one game, you were out, and you went into the loser's bracket. But I feel like it's really good. I heard that they're getting more money, they're getting more revenue from this new playoff format, so I believe it's a good idea. Now that's a very interesting take, Uzziah, because a number of people are against it because they say that once you lose that playoff game, the rest of the games, they're just time fillers, they're space fillers, they mean nothing. Yeah. It's interesting that you say it's a good thing. What does what were those last three games against Catholic Memorial New Bedford? What were they like? Well, um, I know that we, in the beginning of the year, in the regular season, when we played Catholic Memorial in New Bedford, they, they were really good games. And the first time we played New Bedford, 
Brockton and New Bedford have a real serious rivalry. It's very heated all the time. But the second time, it, it was it was an unfair game. But I feel like when we play those two teams all the time, beginning of the year, end of the year, no matter what, it's always a great game at all times. Well, the buzzer sounds here at Staff Gymnasium. Brockton coming up with a very big win in their first divisional game of the year. The final score, 49 to 28. Brockton gets the better of the Hilltoppers and Miles. A very good game. I gotta give the, the game ball to number 35, Aaliyah Brito. Uh, I have to concur with that. She just played a yeoman effort, especially after getting hit in the face. Glass is knocked off, glass is, um, the lens falls out. She comes out for a few minutes, goes, comes right back in. She's a real gamer and played a great game without her glasses. Second half, I guess they fixed the glasses. She came, she had the glasses on in the second half, but it just shows the type of player um, Aaliyah Brito is. Tough, um, very smart basketball player, and she's just a great leader for this um, bo lady boxer team. And Miles, on the other side, Brianna Camara, number 14. She can play. She can handle the ball. She can shoot the outside shot. She can drive into the paint. She did it all for the Hilltoppers tonight. Unfortunately, her lone effort wasn't enough. No, it wasn't, but I'm impressed with her game. I, I tell you, we had her on the, on the um, box, lady boxer team. We'd really be looking at going to the garden with her. Definitely, I can't, I'm not saying lady boxers can't go to the garden, but she is a dynamite basketball player, um, Uzea. Um, yes, she is, and I, as I noticed, I, believe, I don't believe she got out the game once tonight, and um, she, she's, a, as um, you said, that she's an overall athlete. She's the starting varsity goalie, and I, um, they had a good rivalry with our, our girls um, for soccer, and it's great, good to see her back playing in another sport. So, yeah, she, she's a really good basketball player. She, she has heart, and she has potential to do big things. The rebounding of the Brockton Boxers, guys, really, really on point tonight, led by number 11, Tony Fairhurst, the big guy in the paint, able to get the rebounds, attempt to put it off the glass, didn't go in too much tonight, Brockton didn't have the lucky rolls, but Brockton's rebounding was on point. You know, it, it rebounding, especially in, in ladies basketball, is so important because the ball just doesn't go in as, as, as much as it does with the boys. But if you can control those boards, you your, your chances of winning are elevated so much. And, and that's what I like about this Brockton High team. They've, they've got um, um, Brito, they've got Fairhurst, a couple other people that, and really, it, if, as long as you keep one of those in there, that they have a good chance of controlling those um, boards. And when you got both of them in there, forget it. Well, the final score from Staff Gymnasium, 49 to 28, the Brockton Boxers come out on top of the Derby Hilltoppers. For the Brockton High School Television Production Club, our broadcast team, Uzziah Hilliard, Miles Jackson, our camera guys, our director and replay technician. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We will see you next game. Hey, nice job. Um, I'll probably be... Okay, very good. We get a different setup tonight. Jerry, don't hate me.